Parent Functions and Transformations. Okay, so what we're going to do in this set of notes is we're just going to fill out the large table on the front of your Concept 2A notes. So the first part asks for the definition of a parent function. And the way I like to define it is the most basic form of a function. So one analogy that I um, use for this is a sundae bar. So if you were going to make an ice cream sundae, your most basic form of an ice cream sundae would be a bowl with vanilla ice cream. Now, from that point, you might go to the sprinkles or the um, chocolate chips, anything, but your friend might go to different options. So the most basic form that everyone starts off with is, with is this bowl of white or vanilla ice cream. So then you transform it into whatever you want. And that's what transformations of functions do. You start out with the most basic form, the most basic graph, the most basic equation, and then you um, add to it, multiply by it, do different transformations to change what it looks like. Okay, so for this first one we're going to start, I'd like you to fill out the names of the parent functions and the parent functions in the top row of your graph, or of your table. So the first one is called constant function, and that's just f of x equals 1. The graph of a constant function is just a horizontal line through 1 on the y-axis. It's very basic, just a horizontal line we'll find that the only transformations that this does is move up or down, so it's kind of boring. Next is our linear function, which you should be familiar with. Linear is in the form um, y equals mx plus b usually. The m and the b are transformations. So just the basic form is just going to be f of x equals x. Here's the graph of a linear function, and some things to note is that its slope is up 1 over 1. So if I ever have you draw a parent function, I'm going to need to see these two points where you've gone up one over one. All right, next is absolute value function. This is f of x equals the absolute value of x. The graph of an absolute value looks like a v. Again, you'll notice that on both sides it goes over one, up one. These points are very important to draw on your parent functions or else I won't know if you've stretched it or compressed it. So you'll need to always show me these three points. Quadratic is very close to an absolute value equation. In fact, it should have an x squared here. Looks like my um, print got messed up. Um, quadratic is very close to absolute value. It'll use the same three points. Just this time, instead of having straight lines, you have curved lines. So whereas the absolute value, we could have kept going up on either side, up 1 over 1. You can't with a quadratic. It has a curve. So whenever you're drawing a quadratic, I always need to see th these three points right here. Okay, so those are your four graphs of your parent functions. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is translating left and right. So this is not applicable for, applicable for um, constant or linear functions, so go ahead and put a big X through those squares so that you know that there's nothing that should be there. Next we'll look at the absolute value functions. So whenever we want to go left or right with an absolute value, all we do is add or subtract something, we call it our H value, on the inside of the absolute value. So one example here is F of X equals the absolute value of X plus 4. Now this is the one tricky part of most of this is that if you were to add 4 on the inside you would think that that would go to the right 4 but in fact that goes left 4 so make a note that anytime you add h it goes left and anytime you subtract an h it goes right so this is backwards of what you would probably normally think Likewise with the quadratic, you'll see that these two are pretty much the same function, just different shapes. Likewise with the quadratic, to go left and right, we do a minus h on the inside. And this one, a minus 5, is going to take us right 5. So this takes us right 5 units. Graphically, what that looks like is if we had our original parent function, I'm not going to do it too perfectly here, it would just take this vertex right here and move it to the right 5. So it just got moved over right 5. Okay, so big thing to take away from this slide is if you subtract an h on the inside, it's going to go right. If you add an h on the inside, it will go left. Alright, next we have up-down. This is a little bit more intuitive. 
For constant, it's just it's the only movement that constant functions do. So if you add a k, that's our variable for up down. If you add a k on, it's going to go up. If you subtract a k off, it's going to go down. So this f of x equals 5, that went up 4 from the parent function. f of x equals negative 2 went down 3 from the parent function because we subtracted 3 off. So adding on is up, subtracting off is down. And that'll be the same for all these functions in this row. Next comes linear. If we add or subtract on to our function x, it goes up or down. So here, this example went down 2. For absolute value, same thing. If you add or subtract on the outside, now be careful to note outside, because the other one was inside. If you add or subtract on the outside, it goes up and down. A plus 3 goes up 3. So this is what you would think. If you add, it's going up. If you subtract, it's going down. Quadratic also, if you add k on, if I subtract a 3, I'm going to go down 3. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. I'll write it up here. So subtracting a 3 off the end goes down 3. Next comes reflection over the y-axis. This is not applicable for constant. It is some sort of applicable for absolute value or quadratic, but we're not going to get into that. So for linear, whenever you're re reflecting across the y-axis, you're just going to change the sign of, sign of m. So I have one linear function over here on the left, 2x plus 4. If I want to reflect that over the y-axis, I just changed that slope, that sign of my m, to negative 2. Okay, if I'm going to do a reflection over the x-axis, this um, applies to all four um, parent functions. So first of all, for the constant function, you're just, it's the same thing really as moving it down. You're just changing the sign. So if it was a 1, you change it to a negative 1. If your constant function was f of x equals 10, you change it to a negative 10. For linear, you change the sign of both m and b this time. So if I have negative 2x plus 3, I would change the sign of both the 2 and the 3. So now it becomes 2x minus 3. That will reflect across the x-axis. For absolute value, all I'm doing is making the outside, I'm changing all the outside, I'm changing all the outside signs. So in this first example here with my parent function, I just make this outside a negative. In the second example here, if I had more things going on, um, say absolute value of x plus 2 minus 5, I would just change the sign of my absolute value out here, and I would change the sign of the 5. So notice over here, I have a negative absolute value and a positive 5 now. So I'm changing all of the signs that are on the outside of the absolute value. I didn't do anything with the inside. For quadratics, same thing. Parent function goes from x squared to a negative x squared. And if I have more things going on, like in the second example, I don't do anything with that x plus 2, but I do change the sign of the outside. All right, next is stretch and compress. For constant, it's not applicable because there's no ability to stretch or compress a constant. So go ahead and put an x through that box in your table. For linear, I'm changing the sign of my slope. So right here, I have an m. Changing the sign of my slope. If I make my slope bigger, I get a stretch. If I make my slope smaller, I get a compress. So if m is bigger than 1, 1 is what it is in the parent function because there's no slope other than 1. So if I make m bigger than 1, I get a stretch. If I make m less than 1, I get a compress. Now be careful. A lot of times people will say if m is a fraction, it's a compression. But what if m was 3 over 2? Well, that's not a compress. That's actually a stretch because it's greater than 1. So be careful about that. Also, it didn't matter if there were any up-down movements or anything on these. I just didn't put them on. So that could have been there. Okay, with absolute value, we have a value out front of the absolute value of x. For our parent function, that's just a 1 because there's nothing there. So if we make it a 2 or a 1 -third, we are stretching or compressing. 
So same idea with the M. If A is greater than 1, we stretch. If A is less than 1, we compress. Now notice we just did all of the reflections, and that had all the negatives going on. So here, I won't ever see A being a negative number. If, if I did have maybe a negative 2 right here on this problem, then I would say it's a stretch of 2 and a reflection. So that negative is different than your A here. Last one is quadratic, again, just like your absolute value functions.